Yeah, it's working. Okay, hello, uh, good uh, morning to everybody who is here. And um, my name is Ivan Henriquez, and uh, I'm going to present uh, several projects which is part of my research. And I am also like to introduce the group Hybrid Forms, which is uh, composed by uh, scientists, engineers, um, that we've been working together for the last uh, five years. So uh, this video is like, a, it's, it's part of my, the, the research that I've been doing because nature has been always like a source of inspiration for myself. And in this video, you can see that I'm recording electrical signals of this plant, of this tree. You know, because I was thinking like what, which kind of uh, energy does the nature have and if we can uh, adapt the machines that we do uh, to collaborate with nature instead of destroying it. So one of the first proje projects that I did, you're going to see here in this video. And um, this video is like uh, I started to imagine like the sort of uh, environment where we are connected with another uh, uh, with another living organism, but using technology as an interface. Um, and then this is the first project uh, from this uh, series. It's called the uh, Jurema Action Plant. So the Jurema Action Plant, it's a, it's a robotic structure. Um, that is, uh, on top of it, there is a, a plant called Mimosa pudica. And I don't know if you know this plant, so when you touch the leaves, they fold. And I was very interested, uh, you know, I was very curious to know if this energy, which kind of energy does this leaf open and close when you touch it? So then I started to work with a scientist from Leiden Biology University, uh, researching these electrical signals that travels inside of the plant. And actually what happens, so we, with this specific plant, so any kind of a, a electric magnetic field which is around this plant that can trigger the movement of the leaves, it pumps the water out, and then the leaves, they fold, and then it pumps the water again, and then they open again. But what is happening here, so uh, everyone who touch the leaf of the plant, it enables this machine to move. You know, so actually I, w I was, uh, like, this started with a question, like, if a plant could turn on the machine, but of course, like all the machines that we've been doing, they work with a very high voltage and stable current. But uh, something that we have in common with another living organisms that we work with a very low voltage and unstable current. So it would be possible to adjust machines using this sort of uh, uh, equation, you know? And <coughs> so then I started to, to create this sort of a map of uh, bio machines that I've been developing so far. So first you saw the action plant and then prototype for a new bio machine which actually uh, splitted my research in two different points. So one is uh, interspecimen communication and the other one is environmental robotics. Because actually when, uh, when people talk about environmental robotics, usually like the robots, they are meant to, to explore uh, environments which is uh, remote, remote environments or, or collecting data from uh, from uh, uh, endangered places. But actually what I think about uh, biorobotics or environmental robotics, they are robots which has uh, living organisms or have like a biological uh, uh, system operating together with a mechanical and electrical systems. So uh, this is the prototype for a new bio machine, which actually is the evolution of the action plant. Because actually I'm measuring like the same, uh, the same electrical signals which are traveling inside of the plant. Because when I was showing the action plant um, quite often in some exhibitions, uh, people were asking if only that plant would have this sort of electrical uh, current. But actually all the plants they have, and not o only the plants, but microbes, uh, humans, birds, uh, you know, all the, the living organisms, they have like this very tiny electrical current uh, traveling inside. So then I did this another sort of an evolution as a, the next step of the action plant, the previous project. And this plant is the, is the from the family Omalomena, which actually don't have like this uh, mechanical movements, but it demonstrates that several plants, they can, they're able uh, uh, to provide this electricity. Okay. 
So, uh, yeah, so it's more or less like the same thing. It's a customized machine with a board of communication between the plant and the machine and the plant Omalomena. So going through uh, the interspecimen communication, um, this is a work that I did in New York. And I wanted, because like since I started to do this, uh, this biological robots, I, I started to think like what would be the next step for these uh, bio machines, you know? Um, and then uh, this, in this uh, exhibition, I was uh, researching about photosynthetic microorganisms because I thought, well, photosynthesis could be really like the next step for all these uh, plant machines uh, um, uh, works. And I was collecting at the beach of New York, so actually you just make uh, a small, uh, you, m you make a net, you know, using a pantyhose, which is kind of enough to collect these microorganisms which are floating on the surface of the water. And so then I collected them, but then comes the second, the second issue is like how to keep them alive. And uh, here you're gonna see uh, a video, I hope it plays. Uh, yeah, it's playing. Uh, so actually, I built up this uh, installation uh, that you can see is a sort of a lab here. In this aquarium, we have like several of these uh, photosynthetic microorganisms. And I'm trying to keep them alive uh, in order to visualize them. You know, so it, uh, regarding the visualization, so what I'm using is a laser pointer and I collect a droplet of water from that aquarium there. And that droplet of water contains a lot of microorganisms. So I have a laser pointer, which is pointing towards uh, a mirror. And in the center of this mirror, there's a, drop, a droplet of water, which actually becomes a sort of a lens. So when the laser beams through the, the droplet of water, it uh, hits the mirror and then it projects on the wall in front. So projects like these uh, living organisms, making a sort of a real time visualization of these uh, photosynthetic organisms which are collected in the surface of the water during that time. And actually, so th these works uh, that I've been developed are uh, really part of the, of the research that I've been doing in order to evolve with these uh, biological uh, uh, robots. And, and you see like, a, so the projection actually you could see that like the scale also of these microorganisms, they are like maybe like the size of our head, which actually is something which you cannot see through your eyes. So it's creating this sort of environment where you have like all these microorganisms magnified, but using uh, a very simple technology, which is just like a laser pointer uh, and making the lens, uh, uh, making the, the dro water droplet as a lens. And then the, the other project that I did after this one is called uh, Solar Flares. So Solar Flares is like a, it's a turning platform um, that you can see here. So this is in the Verbeek Foundation in Belgium. And uh, actually this is a turning platform. Uh, it's uh, tracking the position of the sun in the sky, like a s uh, sunflower. You know, so actually you're invited to go on the top of this uh, platform and feel this very subtle movement of the, of, uh, actually of the earth turning around the sun. Because actually if you have the sun and the earth is turning around the sun, this platform is all the time correcting its position towards the sun. So if you see, uh, and actually, yeah, so this is uh, the, the gear part. So it's, it's very simple also, it's a bike chain with, uh, with a bike gear and the software which was running inside of an Arduino. So it was calculating the azimuth during the whole year. So the azimuth is the projection of the sun on the horizon. So it was calculating this specific location in this uh, latitude and longitude from Belgium, was calculating exactly the position of the sun during this whole year. So the turning platform was turning around the sun. So if you imagine like the planet Earth and you imagine just a pin on this planet Earth. So the planet Earth is turning around the sun, but this pin is this platform, which is turning uh, towards the sun. And actually this uh, water uh, basin here is, is sort of an arrow pointing, where is it? Um, and then 
Well, so going through the, the development and the evolution of uh, biomachines, um, I started to create this sort of environmental ro robots, which actually, instead of destroying the environment, they help the environment. In which way? So I thought like about this uh, machine that could, would be able to collect f uh, photosynthetic microorganisms in order to generate electricity for itself. It's like this uh, idea of perpetuum mobile that you know, the most of the researchers they want to, to do with uh, rob robots. So actually the, the symbiotic machine, there's a, a structure more or less like this. So you have like the tentacles, so it's a blind machine. It's just like floating on the surface of the water. And it's trying to search for where these microorganisms are. And, um, and then it has a sense device that actually make a comparison between the three sensors between the three tentacles, and then the machine should be able to process these microorganisms in order to have electricity for itself. But how? No? So this is uh, one of the, the microorganisms that I, I was observing here in Holland. You, like if you go on the summer, you see most of the canals and ponds, you have this uh, sort of algae there. This is a spirogyra. It's a very filamentous uh, algae that uh, goes to the surface when there is uh, heat enough and uh, when the sun is also uh, is strong enough. So actually you can see these bubbles here. They are oxygen, so they are producing, uh, uh, they, are, they are making photosynthesis. And that's myself collecting in a Vondel Park in Amsterdam, collecting some samples in order to, to develop this project further because I started to work with the Free University in Amsterdam with a, bio, uh, with a laser lab with the Department of Bio Solar Cells. But we're going to get there. So this is one of the first uh, sensor tests, and I like this image very much because I started like to, this machine is starting to cohabitate our environment together with another living creatures. So you can see like the ducks there on the back, and I was very happy to put this uh, outside in an uh, environment. And this, and this is in uh, Den Haag, in Zaud Park. And well, the, the sensors, they work as a LED emitter and a LED receiver. So anything, so this algae is always floating on the surface of the water. So the machine also has to be in the same level as, this, as the algae are. So you have an LED emitter and LED receiver. So anything that is in between this uh, sensor so it sends the information to the machine. It said, oh, there is something here. And this is a very emblematic uh, image for this project because actually in order to, to, uh, uh, to use the photosynthetic process of the algae, you have to hack the photosynthetic process. And this is the scientist, Raul Freze, from the Free University in Amsterdam. And uh, he's making this, um, this soap bubble, but it's a sort of a metaphor uh, to, to hacking the photosynthetic process because you need to break the membrane cell of the algae in order to release these photosynthetic particles. Which seems to be very, it's a, it's a very simple technology actually. You have, to, you have to grind the algae and then you filter it and then it becomes like the sort of a green juice and then you put this in a, in a s biosolar cells. What are, what are the biosolar cells? You know, biosolar cells, if you see, like, mo I mean, I think most of the batteries, they have, like, an anode, cathode, and the electrons, they fall to the best conductive uh, metal. And the same thing is happening here. You have, you have the copper mesh, and you have, like, aluminum or gold underneath, and then you have, like, a spacer in the middle, which is this uh, white part here, which is making the distance between the two metals and the algae. It goes in the middle of it. It goes in the middle of it, uh, and when you shine light on it, the electrons, they flow to the best conductive, uh, conductive metal. We are getting, we are getting there. So uh, this is uh, Vincent uh, Freb. He's also a PhD student from the Biosolar Cells in Amsterdam. And he's uh, collecting here a bit of a sand, because actually the sand with the texture from the sand, when it's placed together with the aluminum um, uh, from the biosolar cells, this texture helps the photosynthetic particles to rest more, and then you have like a bigger amount of photosynthetic particles on these biosolar cells. 
And when I'm talking about uh, electricity, we are talking about like milli voltages, you know? So the electricity that is inside of my body, inside of our body, plants, animals, the, we are talking about like milli voltages. And actually what you've seen here is just like a little peak in the signals. Uh, yeah, the, so like here is uh, inside of the lab, so he's shining uh, the best spectrum of light, which is the red one in this case, to have this uh, a small peak of, uh, of energy. You know, but the, the, then the biggest challenge is like, how do you get this, uh, this, uh, um, this development of this technology, which is being done inside of the lab and bring it to the outside environment or in an artist exhibition or even uh, in, a, in the outside environment? And then we are, here is uh, like a, one of the first steps. So we are trying to do this, uh, this uh, biosolar cells in my studio, but without any other uh, high technology. We just ground the algae and we did our cell, uh, the, the biosolar cells ourselves. And this is uh, how the setup of the bios biosolar cells are inside of the symbiotic machine. So the cells, they are connected in series and also in uh, parallel. And this is another graph that maybe you can understand a bit, a bit better because the first drawing was before the project was actually done. And this drawing is like after the project done. So and you can see the work, it works as more or less like a submarine, you know? So you have, you have like this uh, rounded shape here, which is the, the skin of the, of the machine. And then this yellow part are the, uh, the, the biosolar cells, the photocells, and you have the algae. So then you have the mouth and the anus is where actually the, the, all the algae comes in. So the, the machine is just like floating on the water. I show you a small video that maybe you can, you can have a, a better idea. Um, so the machine, this was an exhibition in Amstel Park uh, in Amsterdam in 2014. And actually this machine is making synthetic photosynthesis. So it's hacking the photosynthetic process of this specific algae, the spirogyra. So the whole structure is transparent in order to get more sunlight in any direction. You know, and the machine is a blind structure which is just like, you know, roofing, uh, drifting on the surface of the water in order to find the algae. And this is the part of the stomach of the machine. So you have like a motor which is turning this endless worm, which is part of like, which is pushing the algae uh, towards the stomach of the machine. The stomach is where the, the, um, the biosolar cells are. And so then you can see like this uh, in function, the endless worm is like pushing uh, the algae towards the grinder and the grinder grinds the algae, breaks the membrane cell of the algae and this goes inside of uh, some tube. So this is the, the grinder uh, connected in, in one single X. So actually, so it's sucking the algae, going through the, the endless worm, the grinder, and then goes as a green juice towards inside of the machine. And then there's this, uh, this valve which actually sends the, the algae uh, where the photocells are and the machine goes towards the sun, have light, electrons are flowing inside of the machine, and this is being stored in a battery. Um, and you had to th we had to think about like all this uh, life cycle of a machine, because the machine it has to move and to eat. To move to eat, but eat means making synthetic photosynthesis. So you have to think about like several inner loops inside of this big loop of life in order for the machine to be like an autonomous system. And it's a collaboration with the Mechanical Engineer Lab and the Free University uh, in Amsterdam. And this is the, the, final, the final result of the symbiotic machine. And for me, it was very special to show this work in uh, Amstel Park because I don't know if you've have been there, but Amstel Park is a very special park because it has an albano llama has a kangaroo, you know, so people go to this park to visit these animals, but also see this, another animal uh, floating on the surface of the water, just trying to live, to do like a very basic of life, is just like trying to find food for itself, but making synthetic photosynthesis. You know, so it's like a plant 
it's a plant, but like a, a floating, let's say a floating uh, a mobile plant that just survived. But, you know, the problem, the whole thing about the algae that I forgot to mention, because the algae, the, uh, so this machine is designed for when you have an algae bloom, right? So you have a, a high proliferation of algae, because these algae, they cover the whole surface of the water. So what happens when they close the whole surface of the water? The sunlight cannot go through, so fishes and other, and other plants, they die because they don't have how to make or photosynthesis or to find oxygen for themselves because of this high proliferation of algae. And algae blooms have always occurred in the, in the time, in the life of, of the planet Earth. But as we are like living in this uh, anthropo anthropocenic moment where we are actually being a very active, uh, humans have been very active of changing the environment, what happens? There is a farm and then they put nutrients uh, or fertilizers for the plants. It comes the rain, the rain flushes all these nutrients towards the water or pond or canal. And then this pond and canal is full of nutrients which are good for plants. And then you have like this high proliferation, not only for plants, but for bacteria as well. And then I was thinking like, okay, so it has to evolve. And then I started to research more about these plants and also microorganisms that could, that could use, um, that could be possible to activate another machine and it starts to, to, to move forward. So you have like, the story that I just told you about the fertilizers. So this is actually the story. So you have like these nutrients, which is nitrate, uh, uh, sodium, and potassium. So these are very, uh, uh, they're good food for these uh, microbes and bacteria, but which is pollution for us, you know? So it's a bit, um, and then I started to think, well, so these machines, they have to work together collectively. They have to start to, to work as a swarm. So I thought like, well, it would be wonderful if I have a combination of plants together with microorganisms. And, they, and uh, in, in, a, in a floating uh, robotic structure, um, but, I, they, but working together, more than one, would be almost like a toy. You know, so if we have like a big pond here in between us, I would build this toy and I would put it in the water and then someone else from the audience could also have the same toy and the, and the toys, they would communicate with themselves and they would uh, just like drift on the surface of the water, living for themselves, but also harvest, uh, harvesting energy, but also cleaning, uh, purifying the water. And then came this uh, project called Carvel, which is being exhibited now in uh, Kotrijk in uh, Belgium, uh, in the exhibition called Water War. And then uh, the exhibition goes until the 26th of June. So if you have the opportunity to go there, please go. Then you see the Carvel project. The Carvel is a, it's a big he hexagon, but composed with several hexagons together. And the choice of the hexagon is because it's a form that is very easy, it's like a beehive, you know, it's very easy to compose them together as a grid and create this sort of a grid on the surface of the water so they would be operating and then also uh, purifying the water and then they would spread out and they would go uh, to another spot where it's uh, polluted and then they would join forces together and then clean and keep on drifting and cleaning. Uh, and this is a project that I also I developed together with uh, um, with uh, Ghent University uh, and uh, scientists that work with uh, with uh, uh, microbes that harvest that that generates electricity uh, eating these nutrients. So actually, they excrete these electrons on the environment. But how to capture capture this? Uh, this environment, this, uh, these electrons, you know? So then you see here in the exhibition, you have like these two machines like floating together and composed with the plants because these plants, they really proliferate. If you have like this big amount of nutrients, they, they dominate the whole surface of the water. But once they are in a container, they're just doing their function, which is just like feeding themselves with these nutrients, uh, um, filtering the water, but together, with the bacteria, which are here in these uh, brushes. I'm gonna show you another slide. And actually, so this is one of the, one of the problems uh, from polluted uh, 
polluted rivers and ponds all over the world, you know? So you have like all these plants which you like proliferate very much. And yeah, so you have like these brushes over there. So these brushes, they are made of, a, uh, they are uh, carbon brushes where actually it's a very good conductive material where the bacteria, they can live on it. And at the same time, they are like floating, they are eating all these nutrients they are living on these brushes and excreting electrons, but the electrons, they go inside of the current, inside of these brushes. So you also have like a connection in series and also in parallel, um, providing more electricity for this, uh, for this uh, robotic structure. And yeah, so actually, so they are moving uh, through uh, bubbles because actually the bubbles also help uh, to oxygenize the water for another living organisms. So you can see and, uh, and uh, in, this, in this setup they are not communicating with each other yet, but they are, they are autonomous systems. And this is also like a test that myself together with the scientists, we are like measuring all this uh, electricity which these uh, bacteria are providing uh, for the um, for the uh, for the for the whole uh, electrical system, you know. So then here is also an example of uh, algae on the environment where there is algae. There are also uh, uh, microorganisms, and these microorganisms, I mean the the bacteria, uh, which are making electricity. And this is also an image of a disaster that happened uh, in uh, maybe one of the biggest ecological disasters that happened in Brazil in the beginning of this. Uh, in the beginning of this year, where a dam just broke, and then there was a dam um, that was um, uh, uh, um, to harvest, um, uh, how to say, um, uh, aluminium, but they used a lot of chemistries in order to clean it. So the dam broke, and then this devastated like a lot of life, uh, which are which is inside of this uh, environment. So it's like kilometers and kilometers destroyed cities was really like a terrible uh, thing. And I went there myself to have a look at it. And yeah, so this is uh, the last project that I'm going to show you. Uh, so it's part of this uh, water series that I've been developing so far. And actually this is a sort of a, a water bike, but it's a water bike that you bike and at the same time you filter the water. So it's a machine, so you saw the, from the evolution of plants, from plants to microbes and microbes to humans design, but it's a combination of humans and microorganisms working together, but for our environment. And this is the machine. So this was the test uh, that I did in Rotterdam uh, last week. So you have like these floaters, you have like this, uh, you have this uh, spiral pump, which is a very beautiful, uh, device so while you're biking you're turning the spiral pump the spiral pump is pumping the water uh, towards the filter and then you have you use the gravity uh, to filter the water and the, the clean water goes back to the same uh, to the same uh, place and this is um, this is a uh, uh, just uh, to show a bit more like how the filtering system is so you also have like you have these uh, white, uh, white uh, small cylinders where the bacteria are living. And here you can see a small video, which was before the test. So you see like the spiral pump it collects air and then water, air and water. And of course, like the the air is pushing uh, the water to go up. So you can see that this is also before the filtering system. So you see the water on the top there going out. Um, yeah, and this is this project is gonna be launched in uh, Rotterdam uh, on the 16th of June, which is part of a collaboration uh, with the students from Willem de Kooning Academy, and uh, on the 18th of June there is also the Wine Heaven Festival where I'll be participating and also launching this project. Thank you very much. If uh, anyone has a question, I'm very happy to answer.
Thank you. Um, so in the in the uh, in the model, um, you have a stomach, uh, the eating model, the, the uh, and the, the the motor for the stomach is the energy is coming from the the um, the bio. Uh yes. So uh, th that's why these machines they have to evolve, because w w well, so the synthetic photosynthesis gives like a hundred milliamperes per one square meter, you know. So that's also the reason why the machine has this uh, rounded shape, so we can have a bit more area, you know, to have like this uh, solar cells on composition, but. Uh, it was impossible to power the whole machine with uh, the synthetic photosynthesis, you know? So what is happening? The machine is making synthetic photosynthesis. This is being stored in a battery. And this battery is giving electricity for the whole system, you know? So it's all the time eating and feeding up this battery, and the battery feeds up the, the system, you know? But it's not in balance. And that's why I wanted to evolve this further, because it's very different from the synthetic photosynthesis in the microbial fuel cell, which is the Carvel project. Because the synthetic photosynthesis, once, once you shine light on it, you have like a peak of electricity, as you saw in the graph. But then slowly, gradually, it goes down. And with the microbial fuel cell, it's just it's a, it's a, an exponential. It, it increases over the time. And then it starts to decay when, when you have like no more food for the bacteria. You know, so uh, trying to make this composite, that's why these machines, they have to evolve because each time there's this uh, technological uh, uh, development and both techniques, even the synthetic photosynthesis and the microbial fuel cell, they are being researched at this moment in the lab and they are trying to improve it, you know, so I just, hack the middle of the research and most probably we're going to use this later on in a, in a for the project. Any more questions? No? Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll be around here. Uh, if anybody wants to talk with me further on uh, in more particular, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer.